Well, continuing the Anchor train here, and don't worry, next week I'll do a video that gets no views exploring electronics. Anchor has a weird desktop adapter thing with a charging port on top. This should be interesting to explore what it does and how it differs from other power adapters. The other power adapters today include Avatronic, Roserin, and Nanami. Two look like they may be clones of each other, so something to check out. Maybe one of these power adapters will be the best new power adapter. I'll go through these and test the adapters for performance and features, as well as check weight and value on the quest to find the best power adapter. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. First up is this Nanami 100 watt USB desktop fast charging station with GAN. The adapter is in pretty standard packaging. The adapter itself looks okay. It is one of the more flat style desktop adapters. It is a moderate sized device for the power level on first impression. It has a removable figure eight power lead with four USB ports. The nice part about the removable power cord is you can easily add an international power cord to this unit. The AC or mains voltage input on this and all the units today are universal. The 2A and 2C seems to be a common port arrangement still. When we flip the adapter around, we can see that this adapter has a safety listing, which is nice to see, as well as the Department of Energy 6 mark on this product, which would indicate that it has been tested and complies with energy efficiency requirements. The port sharing is on the web along with the supported protocols and some basic specs. Actually not terrible, with a reasonable list of supported devices. Let me check the user manual, and it's pretty standard fare on this one. It seems the PPS mode gets forgotten in writing. So let's plug it in and find out what it can do. The first thing I see with this power adapter is it has reasonable idle power consumption. This is a good first step. For the modes of operation, this adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes. The power adapter also has a programmable power supply mode or variable voltage mode, which can be more efficient for charging of 20 volts. This can go up to 3 amps, so this should support 25 watt Samsung fast charging. The power negotiation is the same as most of these USB power adapters. Any plug or unplug causes renegotiation of all the outputs. The data on this one is okay. In a time when many of these adapters can hit 90 plus percent efficiency, this power adapter is stuck around the high 80s. It isn't awful looking as a standalone, but in comparison with the devices from later on, it will stand out. The output voltages all look good though, which is always nice. One interesting note is that when the mode of operation changes between 50 and 75% operation, the voltage ripple on the device decreases significantly, pointing to another reason to have the technology we'll talk about a little later in this video. The Roserun Desktop Fast Charger 2C plus 2 a 100 watt is up next. Tiny box for this one, so good optimization of packaging. Plastic wrapping, a user manual, and an adapter. Not much more needed here. The adapter is fairly compact for a 100 watt adapter. It also has that same style removable power cord, the most requested feature on the Bassius desktop adapter. We get four total USB ports, 2A and 2C, so a good mix of old and new here. When we flip the adapter around, we can see this adapter has a safety listing, which is nice to see. I also see the Department of Energy mark on this product, so the six in a circle, which indicates this has been tested and complies with those energy efficiency requirements. Again, something to check out when looking at the data. The user manual is standard fare. They give the usual details and a list of what ports can do what. The web marketing data on this is also not terrible in that it provides port sharing infographics, modes of operation. Again, PPS is mentioned, but not the specific capability. I want to plug in four things. Well, that is clearly laid out in the user manual and on the web with what it can do with four things plugged in. Great. Time to plug it in and find out what it can do. The first thing I see with this power adapter is it has reasonably low idle power consumption. This is right in line with other power adapters around this power level. Nice. For modes of operation, this adapter has five, nine, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes on the USB-C ports. I didn't check the USB-A ports, but they mentioned QC with one port used, and then it's five volts and three amps shared. The power adapter also has a programmable power supply mode or variable voltage mode. This can be more efficient for charging. The voltage is at 21 volts and can go up to five amps too, so this might be a good option for Samsung super fast charging. I checked both USB-C ports and PPS, and this charger does support two PPS devices at once. However, the voltage drops to 11 volts and it only supports 25 watts for each port. The power negotiation is the same as most of these USB power adapters. Any plug or unplug causes a renegotiation of all the outputs. The data on this thing is looking pretty good. Actually, the performance almost perfectly lines up with the Bassius 100 watt desktop adapter. I mean, like it's the same adapter. I have multiple of that one and they all test the same and so does the
does this. The performance is class leading and its efficiency and idle performance are more than good enough to meet the basic six energy efficiency requirements and means it's a good performer for charging from low wattage to up to high wattage. It does have an edge for medium to higher wattage charging though. The DC side looks good too. Low ripple and good voltage tolerance. The Avatronic PD Pioneer 100 watt 4 port desktop charger is next. This power adapter comes with a bonus in the box. You get a USB power cable too. The power adapter almost looks identical to the Roserin desktop adapter. The adapter is a less expensive device on typical pricing, so it will be interesting to see if there's any corners cut in the data for this one. The adapter does not have the DOE 6 mark on it. The adapter has the same feature set as the Roserin. The web data is a little more vague, but they do provide a nice charging chart for how the ports charge with multiple devices plugged in. The user manual is a little more vague. It does provide some data for the adapter, but not a whole lot. I think they could do a little better here. Although the adapter appearance looks the same as the Roserin, there are subtle differences making me think it actually isn't the same. The data will prove that out. So let's plug it in and find out what it can do. The first thing I see with this power adapter is that it has reasonably low idle power consumption. No alarms and no surprises. For modes of operation, the adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes on the USB-C port. Starting to sound like a broken record here. The power adapter also has the programmable power supply mode of 21 volts and can go up to five amps, so full power. The power negotiation is typical with any plug and unplug requiring a reset of the USB modes of operation. The AC data is very similar to the Roserin. It is, however, less efficient. Enough to make a difference in the performance figures. When you're at the top of the stack, a little bit counts. This means that even though the adapter physically looks the same, there is something different inside of this adapter. Something that probably helps to make it cheaper, but also makes it worse in some ways. In terms of the output side, the voltage ripple and voltage level were good, so it does have that going for it. The power supply choice is probably going to come down to value, which we will look at a little later on. Last up is the Anchor Multi-Device Fast Charging 100 Watt Prime A1902. This adapter comes in the biggest box with the most confusing package. The adapter is brand new, just on the market in July 2023. The easy to open box immediately failed as soon as I tried to open it. Copying Apple here, but failing miserably. Some brute force later, and we're in. The adapter is a three port device with two USB-C ports and one USB-A port. The adapter is a little bit of a shiny finish on the face. The adapter has the requisite safety marks and the DOE 6 logo. The user manual for this one has some efficiency numbers and other details spelled out. It seems to be a theme to mention people PPS support, but then not specifically say what that means. The efficiency values stated are very low, really low performance numbers. If this thing was that inefficient, it would literally melt without a cooling fan. We saw this on the last Anchor Power Adapter as well, and that was far above these figures. We'll see what the real numbers are in a little bit. This power adapter has a special feature. It has little pogo pins on the top of the adapter, which allows it to directly charge the newer Anchor power banks without needing a cable. It is a wired connection, so you get a really good connection and it connects with a magnet quite strong magnet. It can easily pick up the adapter. I guess that's why it includes two adhesive strips to stick this thing down. I have no idea why there's an LED on the front for that. For all I can tell, it does nothing. It will charge at 100 watts alone. If you use it with other cables plugged in, it drops to about 30 watts, which is not all that much slower than the bulk of the charging time on this power bank anyway. So let's plug it in and find out what it can do. The idle power settled out to a higher number. This isn't the worst idle performance number, but it is certainly higher than normal. It meets the requirements for a multi-voltage device for DOE, but not for a single voltage device. For the modes of operation, this adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes. It also has a programmable power supply or variable voltage mode, which can be more efficient for charging of 11 volts. And in this case, it can do 4.5 amps. So it's borderline for supporting 45 watt Samsung super fast charging. It may struggle since the current limit is set a little too low. The power sharing is different on this one. It still renegotiates on plugs and unplugs, but it is so fast on the unplugs the meter doesn't actually register a change if only in the 5 volt mode. This isn't bad. It does show some improvement on the plug and unplug of devices. The data is okay. This power adapter falls back into the pack in terms of overall performance. Higher efficiency than some, reasonably low voltage ripple on the output, DC voltage is a little low, but in spec. The power adapter does work, but for being a little larger of a device, it doesn't really add much except having that platform to connect the power bank. Chances are I have other devices and I will use a USB-C cable to charge that way anyway, so I'd rather the new smaller Anchor 100 watt adapter than this larger and less efficient option. I'd say there is somewhat of a gimmick alert. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is drawn. This can happen from a short circuit or a misbehaving device. 
These adapters tripped at different levels and recovered after removal of the faults. The Nanami pushed things a little bit far but did finally turn off. Power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. If you've watched the videos before, you know the drill. The goal is saving energy. There's a video linked in the description with a deep dive. These power adapters all have it. Here is a comparison of the Roserun and the Nanami doing 100 watts on the output. You can clearly see one of these uses extra watts and is less efficient. The Anchor does turn its power factor correction on and off for the 5, 9, or 12 volt modes. This isn't great since you can pull almost 50 watts and the PFC still won't turn on. Worse is that this one uses even less power with PFC on, so lower wattage on versus off. So it's just insult to not have it on here. Comparing the Anchorin at full load to the Roserin, they are different. The Roserin is actually a little more noisy, but it doesn't actually use as many watts. In terms of power consumed and energy, this is actually better. The Anchor really focuses on making a near perfect sine wave, which is nice, but not really required. Okay, time to get some weights on these adapters. The packaging for all these adapters was all over the place. The Anchor had a little too much and the Roserun was nice and light. In terms of the power adapters, the Roserun is not the lightest around, but not bad considering with the power cable. The Anchor is on the heavier side. The Roserun and Avertronic look like they're similar adapters to the Basia's 100 watt, but the casing is a bit larger. This extra space, I'm assuming, is to house that power connector, but otherwise they do look the same. The Roserun and Avertronic do have different companies listed as the OEM though. Time to compare the data. I have tested a lot of 100 watt adapters. It's actually a task to just choose which ones to compare to. I don't bother comparing to the junkier ones. When comparing the idle data with others, there are a few lower wattage options and a few moderate wattage options. These all meet the energy efficiency standards claim though, and the quality is reasonable on all of them. The Satoshi 100 watt still has the crown for this though. On the idle graph, again, Satoshi is best for idle, the anchor takes the higher spot and higher than all the others it's being compared to. It looks like it takes a little extra power for that top port. The Roserun and Avatronic are solid middle of the pack though. Not bad. When comparing the overall data with other adapters, these are packed into a pretty tight space now. So I picked all similar adapters and really the best ones. The Roserun looks like it is identical to the Bassius desktop adapter, which is my number one choice for 100 watts still. So it looks like we have another option now. On the average power consumption graph, it is interesting how the Roserun is actually the most efficient offering. This is really margin of error kind of things. The graph is way zoomed in, but this is still impressive. All these adapters really didn't do terrible terrible here, but the Anchor and Nanami stand out as using a little extra power and therefore over time cost you more by comparison. The Avatronics, which looks like it is a clone, is different enough that I'd say it's probably not the same adapter. Let's talk about value. I picked a range of adapters from cheap to expensive. The cheapest option is Avatronic, is actually a good performance device, so this value actually counts for something in this case. It's not a bad option if you want to save a few bucks at the 100 watt power level. The Roserun and the Bassius each match in terms of value, and I think they're essentially identical adapters on the inside. Maybe the Avatronic cheaped out on some component on the inside. Anchor holds the lower value spots, and this time the value is bad. At least the Prime 100 watt wall adapter is good. Okay, yeah, another round of 100 watt power adapters. Yes, I still have more of these here. These ones were all pretty similar products. Some behaved better, some worse. For the most part, they were all the same. The Roserun is the standout in this group compared with the last 100 watt round and the wall type 100 watt adapter being basically hot garbage. This thing is great. I think it is a rework of the Bassius power adapter in terms of the internals, but it has a replaceable power cord, which is the number one complaint on the Bassius adapter. So this is great that there is another strong performance adapter on the market in the 100 watt category. Seems like there are a lot of great options out there now. Some of the notable results of the Anchor with its less than ideal power factor correction that actually uses a little less power while on, but is stubborn to turn on. The Nanami continues that and is actually kind of not great, and the Evertronic is okay. The Avatronic is compelling from the value perspective. None of these power adapters has any standout issues with voltage ripple and all were in good voltage tolerance. The various USB protocol compatibility and renegotiation is similar to everything else out there, so nothing of note there. That's about it. Is 100 watts becoming a boring category? Let me know down below. No replacement winner this week, but one adapter did tie, so that's not bad. At least it is showing there are more options out there. Okay, time to apply the stickers. These are tested and on the database, so you can take a look at how they stack up. The Anchor Prime didn't win today, but with its new interface to the power bank, not sure I get it. 
Overall, it looks like the Roserin is a rework of the Bassius 100 watt adapter and it tested identically and it has a replaceable power cord. So this is a nice find. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be doing something different next week with a mystery electronics device exploration. The goal is to find out what this thing does by exploration since it's totally unlabeled. Check my website for upcoming videos. There's a schedule of release dates. I have many more of these adapters, so many more videos in the future. Goodbye.